What do you think? It's a microphone. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So, this is my new microphone. I'll leave a link for it. It was not that expensive. It was only $39, $39 for this. My other microphone that I had to plug in, hmm, I put that away and didn't get, I didn't get rid of it. But, so how is this? How's it sound, everybody? So how's everybody doing? I made you some tea. It's a big thing of tea. Herbal tea. Today's herbal tea day. There you go. Yeah. <sighs> Cheers. Mm. Now mine, I've already kind of drinking it down. Mmm, that tastes good. It's got some ginger in it too. So I got my microphone. And what am I going to talk about today? <laughs> I don't know. What am I going to talk about? <clears throat> well, the last video I showed like what was in my one bin up there. And I had a couple of you mention, well, um, that's sort of a repeat. We've already seen that. And it made me think, <clears throat> what haven't I showed you? I pretty much showed you everything. Now, I'm in a new van. Check. It's very similar to my other one. So the system is pretty much the same. Yeah. So as I could start all over and show you everything in here. But I'm going to get people going. That's a repeat. That's a repeat. Well, I've shown my lights. Yeah. I've shown my temperature gauge. I've got my fan going. Um, it's 81 degrees in here. It's hot. But i got to be in the sun because um, I need to get my jackeries and my Oakmo powered up. showed you my flower I've showed you my bedding I've showed you my bins I've showed you my bins over here I've showed you my solar whoops I'm cockeyed there we go let me get this get this straight one thing I have showed you, and I'm going to show you all over again, my net gaiters. Now, these are my net gaiters, and I have collected every color and pattern that I've sold. I love this one. This is actually one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I do like this one. It's got the green, the purple. Yeah. Well, I'm going to mention to you all that they're going fast. I've still, I put some of them in a collection. And look at that, uh, black, uh, black and white paisley. So while I talk, I'll show these to you. These are pink rose. Yeah. But I'm going to mention gray. I have lots of gray left. And of course, well, one more of these. I love this one. Lots of black. But I'm going to mention to y'all that I'm not going to order any more. So what I have is what is going to be sold. So if you want to get your hands on a few of these, because they're, I don't think one is really enough. Do you? I mean, they fit so well. And the reason I wanted to sell them to you and offer them is because I love them so much. And I found a place where I can get um, them just a little bit cheaper and so that I could offer them to you at a good price. Well, guess what? This is the last and what I have is what's gonna be sold. So if you wanna get your hands on a few of these, just go to minivanley.com. Go there and go ahead and order. Uh, don't worry about it. Just get what you can and and run because this is all that I'm going to order. Now, I do have a lot of arm gaiters too. Oh yeah, the arm gaiters are going very well also. And I won't be um, reordering those. I'll find some new products. I mean, you can't just sell uh, neck gaiters. 
you know, forever. So get them while you can. And that's all I'll say, but they fit so well and you can wet them. There's no problem with wetting them and keeping cool here. There we go. Oh yeah. Got my fan going. I really like this. This is actually really comfortable. <clears throat> so this is something new I can tell you about. Yeah. But there's just not much else that, uh, that is new that I can tell you about. Um, so it, I've really been contemplating that. Like, what am I going to talk about? Let me get that down. What am I going to talk about anymore as a nomad? What are other nomads? They just keep recycling the same. I mean, we're all just recycling the same subjects over and over and over again. Um, you know, we travel somewhere and that's... Um, yeah, we can show where we travel. Well, I'm in Tucson, and I know that you've seen a lot of that. And I, the reason I'm here is because I've been very busy. I had a lot of catch-up to do for business. Now, a lot of nomads, they go out, and they travel out in the boonies. But um, I know that they have to travel back and forth to upload. I know they do. I mean, they would almost have to, to upload videos. And me, I've already done that in Quartzsite for three months, and I want to be here. So as far as like a new area of being in to show you, I'm not even, I can't even show you that right now. But so it's just a lot of recycled information. But I was talking to my friend, Julie. Hey, Julie. And she said, Lee, um, there's a few of us that we're going to be the leaders in this, in, in what's coming up in the world. And I'm like, what's coming up? <laughs> what's coming up? You know, I'm so busy. I don't really watch the news. I mean, I got a clue what's going on, but <clears throat> I don't follow every little thing in the news. And she said that you need, she goes, you need to keep teaching people how to do this lifestyle because there's so many people that are going to have to to uh, get started with it. So I thought, okay, I mean, okay, I mean, okay, I'll keep doing it. But if things keep getting recycled, I'm sorry if they do. They might, the same subjects. Now, here's a subject that probably gets recycled. And it's kind of interesting, too, that I don't get that many views when I talk about solar. I get my least amount of views when I talk about solar in a video. I know. And I think that is so important to have solar. Well, I did get a, just recently, I got, Lee, I just bought a flexible solar panel. And I was shocked that it wasn't as flexible as I thought it would be. And there's ridges on my roof. And how do I tape it down straight if I have all those ridges? There's these ridges that go along the top of our um, of my minivan, and most of them have it. Well, I thought, well, that's a perfect example. I mean, I don't mind telling you. I'm not going to do a whole video about it. I can leave a link for the video where I did show you what I did. She wanted me to... Um, show again how I brought it through the window. Well, I've already done that and I don't want to recycle it. And I never really get that many views for my solar. And now I realize why, because you maybe, maybe you aren't or she or whoever isn't really paying attention. Maybe the solar subject is boring. <laughs> maybe it is. I don't know. Um, maybe they think it's going to be too technical um, I think I'd go through it pretty easy and trying to explain things pretty fun. But here's the deal with the flexible solar panel. Of course, the solar panel isn't like jiggly. It's straight, but it is flexible. That it, it can be bent a little bit. There's going to be ridges. So what you have to do is when you've got your solar panel down and you tape it, and let's say there's a ridge here and a ridge here, you have to take the tape and go around the ridges, right? so that nothing will get through, like water. So just take the time, look at it like it is a art project, an art project for yourself, yeah. And just make sure that there you go around the ridges, take the tape around it. 
make sure that it, it goes all the way around. When you go to the back to do the ridges again, you have to be very careful with the tape. Make sure that it's totally flush with the roof. You bring it through the window, but I'll leave a link for that video. Yeah, I cycled some information. Well, yes, I did. And all of us nomads, we do that. We just keep recycling subjects because people want to know. Here's another thing is there are new people coming through all the time discovering nomad channels and they might be new to the whole game. And so they want to know, and we have to go over things again, maybe with a different, with a different um, light, with a different um, explanation, a better explanation of how to do these things. So, yeah, I mean, I've pretty much shown what I have. I've shown, <clears throat> I've shown my system. And it is the same system because this is my system. This is what I enjoy. Um, this is what I'm comfortable with. Putting my dresser right here. Having my lights right here. Yeah. Um, uh, like over here, I hang, like over here, I hang my flashlights. Through night, flashlights. I hang my fruit. Yeah. There is one thing that somebody asked me <laughs> when I showed my bins. And she goes, well, that's all nice to see your bins, but why don't you show us your cooler? I don't know where she got the impression I have a cooler. I don't have a cooler. I am, um, I don't have one. I carry uh, fruits and veggies that will last a long time, like apples. A cucumber will last a couple days. Lettuce I can pretty much get to last a couple days if I treat it properly. <clears throat> if I take it out of the bag... I spray it all down with water and then I wrap it with um, paper towels. I can pretty much keep my lettuce for a couple of days. But I eat canned foods and I eat nuts and berries and things like that. Yeah. And that's what I eat. I eat cold foods. Peanut, I'm back to eat. I, sometimes I eat peanut butter sandwiches. So I, I, if I had a cooler, I would show it to you. Why don't I have a cooler? Well, this is probably a recycle also for you, is I don't like having to spend money on ice. I have to constantly go get ice. I don't like that. And also, I did have a 12 volt refrigerator for probably about three months. They sent it to me to do a review. It was set power. And it took all of my energy out of my Jackery's. It drained me all the time. So no, in the in the winter, it wouldn't be so bad because you can park in the sun where my solar can be in the sun. But if it's, if it's summer, I gotta get in the shade, which means that I constantly, in the morning, I have to kind of suffer in the heat in order to get my jackeries back up. <clears throat> yep, it's summertime. Now when I'm traveling and I'm on the road all the time, no big whoop, hey, you know, I'm out there traveling. I mean, I'm moving and my solar's out in the sun. And yeah, I can get everything really zapped up. Now, I could pull out my solar and put it outside, but that still means I have to sit outside and babysit it and yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> now, why don't I travel all the time? Well, here's another recycle. I like to kind of go somewhere and kind of sit for a while and get acclimated and get some stuff done. If I was traveling all the time, I would be sitting in my seat and I would be driving all the time. And I don't like that. It, it, it tires me out and it, it makes my body ache to be sitting in that position all the time while I'm driving. Plus, guess what's going on right now is we got gas, um, high gas. So, so there's another recycled situation, yeah. Well, I do have a letter I want to read you. So <clears throat> I believe that since you all know so much, most of you know what's in my bins, what's on my dressers, how I do this, how I do that, how I cook, how I make coffee, how I pull out my bed, um, what I do all day long, how I sit, just sit back and kick up my feet and do things. Yeah. 
and how I exercise. Although I do have some exercise videos coming for y'all. Well, I was thinking that a lot of in the future is going to be about you. We all know about me. I want to talk about you. So I'm going to need some of your letters. And okay, so I found the letter. And it is from Anonymous. She doesn't want her name to be revealed. Maybe she feels somebody will watch this and know that it's her. But it says, hi, Lee. Thank you for encouraging your viewers and specifically encouraging me to ask questions to answers in your videos. I've been wanting to ask you questions for a long time, but because of shame, I'd like for you to keep me anonymous. Yeah. Okay. It goes on. Being a nomad in the near future would bring me so much joy and enhance the quality of my life so much more. I've always had the desire to travel, explore, and be in nature. Unfortunately, I'm held back because of a debilitating driving phobia where I only feel comfortable driving in my city. I can't drive on highways, sleep st steep hills, bridges, and long distances. Realistically speaking, do you think I'll ever get over this or am I doomed for life? Well, no. Nobody's ever doomed for life, but let's go on. Also, when driving on the highway or on speedy roads, what is your average speed limit you feel comfortable maintaining? If you do drive slower than others, do you get bullied or tailgated? Well, okay. I looked up a little bit about this and it looks like um, the name of a driving phobia, if I can remember, I'm not going to look it up. Let's see if I can remember it. If I get it right, fine. If I don't, you know, this is real time stuff. Um, amoxophobia, amo um, uh, amoxophobia, I believe that's it. amoxophobia. It is a fear of driving and there's all different levels. But nobody's doomed for a life. No, 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 no. Nobody's doomed. I will mention, though, that John Lennon, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but John Lennon could not drive. He had this horrible phobia of driving, and he never drove. He did drive once, according to legend. He drove once. He was with Yoko, Julian, and her daughter, and he drove it right into a ditch, and they got hurt. He cannot drive. There's something about... Uh, driving maybe with um in in the brain like um trying to get everything situated with distance things like that i don't know but he always had a when he became he had a chauffeur who drove him around everywhere well there are different levels of driving phobias one is like what you have where you always want to drive in your familiar area but there are all there are a lot of people who can't drive at all or like you said they they they're afraid of going too fast there's just all kinds of different levels of driving phobias and the only way to get over that is through desensitization that is with any phobia if you have a phobia of a spider they will desensitize you with um <clears throat> pictures of spiders and then maybe they'll bring a spider in that won't let them get on you, but there'll be a spider and they'll have it like in a, in a glass thing so that you can look at it. So you have to become desensitized. Now, a phobia of driving on the highway and driving too fast or over bridges. There's a lot of people who have phobias over bridges. I remember I did a children's video on bridges, right? It was so cute. And, um, I did include the Mackinac Bridge and there are actual, there are people who you can pay to drive across the bridge for them. You're in the car, but they'll drive it across because the Mackinac Bridge kind of swings. It's long and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of wind that goes across it. And so it, and people are, are terrified of it. In where my daughter lives in Cincinnati, 
there's this one, it's, <laughs> there's this one road, and I'm not kidding, it goes down and up. It's a lot of fun to do. I'd be like, at first I was scared of it. I'd be like, ooh. But because Cincinnati is pretty much, you can get real flat, but then you can go up and down. And I remember going, I thought, okay, well, let me just try it. And I'm, I'm not kidding. It was like a roller coaster ride. You go down and go up. But one time they were working on the road and I thought, oh my gosh. And they were, and cars were stuck. How do you do that? How do you actually, I really, I, I, I wouldn't go on the road because I might go down and then go up and I'm coming up and I got to stop. Well, I was always worried that even if you have an automatic, you go to put on the gas, it sometimes wants to slide back. So, I mean, I do have a little bit of a phobia of, of big, big hills. Oh yeah. And let's see what else, but they do say when, um, when I read about that, it says that a lot of the phobia stems from fear of an accident. Maybe somewhere down the road, you witnessed a really severe car accident and it frightened you. Maybe as a child, um, you were afraid that there would be an accident or something, or maybe, I don't know, but it, it can stem from all kinds of things in your past. Yeah. So you're not doomed. You're just going to have to, I would get online and I would Google um, driving phobia and you'll have to like, um, if you have the money, go see somebody and become desensitized. If you don't have the money for that, then <clears throat> go ahead and uh, see if you can uh, handle it yourself. See if you can get somewhere yourself. You asked me what um, speed limits that I can handle. I can handle speed limits, yeah. I've never really been bullied. I don't, I don't go too slow on the highway. I don't speed, but I try to go with traffic. Sometimes if the, if the speed limit is like 75, I will go 80, but sometimes everybody else is going 85 and I'll just join in and I go 85. I'm a careful driver and it doesn't bother me to go fast. I don't mind going slower at all. I witnessed a severe car accident one time and it was, it kind of rocked my world. It didn't give me a phobia, but it rocked my world. I'll never forget it. I was first in line. It was a huge intersection. I was first in line. It was a red light. And all of a sudden this car came this way in front of me and it was a huge intersection. And this car came in and it, and they both went. And I mean, it was like watching a movie. I'll never forget it. And I remember when they landed, the light turned green and I knew that I had to get out of the way. I was not going to be able to help anybody. I needed to go to clear off an area because the ambulance and the police and everybody were going to come. So I went, I, my first thing is I got to clear this path. Let me get out of here. And, uh, I'll never forget that. It was like watching a movie. It was serious. I'm sure they had to go to the hospital. I hope that, um, they survived it. I never did find out if they survived that crash, but it was, it was pretty big. Yeah, it was pretty serious. So, but if you drive, you anything can happen. You're going to have to just drive careful. If as long as you're careful and you're aware of what's going on, then you'll be fine. I just think you'll be fine. And I don't, um, that's the only advice I really have to give you. But I thank you for that letter, Anonymous. Yeah. And I wonder how many more of you tell me your stories. If you have a fear of driving, a phobia of driving. Um, some people might have a phobia of being alone on the road or they have a phobia of traveling alone. I've had people ask me, Hey Lee, you need to get together a kind of a system where people can find out uh, where people can be connected if you want to uh, travel with somebody. Well, I've mentioned this before. Let's do another repeat. Um, let's recycle this information. On Minivan Lee, this Nomad Life Facebook group, 
there we have a thread going where people t can post i'm here this is where i'm at i'd like to find somebody to travel with and they can do it and so it's actually there for you i'm gonna spray it's getting warm in here wow i'm out in the sun so pretty soon i'm gonna go drive as soon as this is over i'm gonna go drive and get in the shade what i like about this park where i'm parked is that um it has the solar panels and I can park under them. Why would anybody say it's important that you help teach people how to live this lifestyle? Don't stop, just keep doing it. Just keep recycling situations and information because there's new people that are gonna be coming forth and wanting to know how to live this nomad lifestyle. Well. One of the reasons is I did see in the news that rents are almost doubling or tripling. So a lot of people are going to be shoved out of their homes. I guess, Julie, maybe that's what you were talking about, that there's so much coming up right now. Foods are increasing in price and rents are increasing in price. Everything is increasing. So... I guess I'll just keep recycling these situations and this information so that you can live this lifestyle and get into a minivan or a SUV or whatever, a van, a high top. Yeah, so you can get in here and you can start living this lifestyle. Do you have to travel all over the country all the time? You're probably not gonna want to because of gas prices, but you could live in your city and still um, be a nomad and live in uh, a minivan or a high top. A lot of people do it. California's filled with them. They're filled, I tell ya. They're, um, they're professionals. They have a high tops. They have closets where they're professional clothes. They get ready every morning for their, or even like in, in uh, Silicon Valley. Yeah, so you can do that too. You don't have to travel all over the place if you're a nomad. You can live in your vehicle and enjoy the lifestyle. So coming up, I've done my reset. Now I'm going to do a restart. Let's do a restart on some information about being a nomad. For all you people coming up who might have to be leaving your homes, let's get started. Now, <laughs> I've got the book. Let's recycle that one. Let's recycle that information. Go to Amazon.com, your, your, you know, your app. Go to Amazon and type in Minivan Lee. Well, my book's going to come up. How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Lee Way. It's not just for minivans. SUVs, high tops, yes. Useful information to get yourself inside your minivan. Now, if you live in a house and you... House prices are up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, do you want to get rid of your house? Maybe you don't. You can just go part-time until you decide what you want to do. Maybe you don't want to sell your house. Maybe you do. Maybe you want to get the equity out of it and get out and get going. So it's really up to you on what you want to do um, with your home. But if you want to get out of it or you have to get out of your home because you're renting it, then I've got some lists for you to get from A to Z and get inside your home. I would definitely join Minivan Lee's Nomad Life Facebook group. Oh yeah. Go to minivanlee.com for all of your needs for um, neck gaiters, arm gaiters. I also have, if you want to support me, I'm gonna mention it. If you wanna support me, I've got um, some different amounts of gifts that you can give me. And it's on minivanlee.com. Uh, don't be afraid to use it. It's e-commerce. It's as safe as ordering from Amazon. But I get 100% of that money. And I know some of you have complained that, oh, no, you know, some people take their cut. Well, of course they're going to take their cut. But on Minivan Lee, yeah, there is no cut. I take 100% of your gift. So thank you very much. Go on there right now. And I've got from $5 to... A big amount if you want to do that you know if you say hey we love you minivan lee let's give you a big amount wow thank you for supporting me and what else do i have going on here oh the podcast 
this Nomad Life podcast with Minnie Van Lee. It's just me, and I'm a solo traveler, and I'm a solo podcaster, so, and I'm a solo vlogger, and, and, um, this is a new restart for me. So, I love you guys so much. Mwah. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I love you guys for following me all this time through my first two years. And now we're going into a whole new era of Minnie Van Lee's life. My restart. I love you. Bye.